Hi everyone, this is Lahiri from ABCs of Anesthesia, and today we're going to talk about valves in veins and why they're not a reason to fail intravenous cannulation. So let's get started. So first of all, let's go through how to identify if your vein has a valve in it. And this is actually quite tricky because you, can, you can't often see the valves, they're internal structures. Um, but every now and again, in a very thin person or someone with very little subcutaneous tissue, you might see a bit of a dilation in that valve or like what looks like a bit of an aneurysmal dilation, which is an aneurysm. So just to show you what that might look like, you might see a normal vein like this, and you might see a little bit of a bulging at one point. That usually indicates a valve. Now, what do you do about this? Generally, I'd stay away. So maybe I would insert my cannula going in just proximal to it, aiming towards the patient, or further down the vein enough such that I've got enough distance for the cannula to fall in without approaching that valve. I wanna make sure that the end of the cannula doesn't abut the valve. That's pretty much it. I try to avoid it. And if I can, I go you know, proximal to it. And if not, I try to go distal enough that the end of the cannula doesn't encounter or touch that valve. Easy, right? Now, the next thing to ask yourself is, are you actually against a valve? So just to reiterate, imagine this is a vein and this is the head end, this is the tail end. So you're, you insert your cannula from here to there. Let's say the valve looks like this inside the vein. So occasionally you might not realize that there's a valve there. So you'll insert the cannula and you'll push up against here. So you won't be able to advance it any further. Um, and you, you'll know this because as you're pushing, you'll notice that you know, you'll notice that you had all the other indicators that everything was going well. You had the first flashback, you had the secondary flashback, but at a certain point, you're just not able to advance the cannula. You might see a tethering or a movement of the vein as well, and that probably tells you that you may be up against a valve, or you may or you may not be in the can, you know in the vein itself anymore. So you'd have to check where you are just to make sure. And I've got a video on how to check that your cannula is in, making sure things like you know you can aspirate, you can flush the cannula, you can you can you know you can see that there's a pulse uh, distal so proximal to where you're flushing and a few other signs. So the next thing we're going to go through is what do you do if you are up against a valve? So let me draw that again. So that's your vein, that's your valve. Now the first thing to do is if I've got my cannula up against the valve, that's, imagine that's the plastic cannula, all I need to do is pull back a little bit. And that way, I know that I'm still in the vein and I check to see if I can flush fluid in the right direction. Now, the next thing I do is I make sure all of my other things are going well. For example, I got the first flashback, I got the secondary flashback inside the cannula itself. So the first flashback was in the in a cannula needle chamber, second flashback was in the cannula lumen. I'm then able to push the cannula and feed it off really easily without any tethering and without any resistance. And finally, I can flush saline through that cannula and notice that there's a bit of a pulse or pressure at the appropriate spot on the vein, you know, prox proximal to where I was flushing. So as long as those things are present and maybe I can aspirate blood, that's a reassuring sign, but not always possible in the smallest veins. So if that is all good, I can withdraw the cannula a tiny amount and then check to see if it works again. Now I'm gonna say this with the provisor that maybe you don't want this cannula to be in that vein for a long period of time. For example, in anesthesia, sometimes the case is only gonna last 10, 15, maybe 30 minutes, and that would be reasonable. But say I've got a very long case um, or this patient's about to go into the ward, I don't really want extra cannula bits sticking out of the skin because maybe that's an infection risk. So again, look to your local hospital policies to make sure you're doing the right thing. But imagine in a really difficult venous access patient, this may be your only option. And it's very reasonable to use that cannula for a short period of time. Again, follow your hospital policies with that. Now there's one other thing to be cautious of. Imagine that you put the cannula in quite close to where the valve is. That means that if you were to pull back on this cannula, there may not be enough cannula in the vein for you to be certain that that cannula will stay there. So any movement of the patient's arm or hands or something else, maybe just the you know, time will cause this cannula to potentially come out of the skin. And that would be incredibly dangerous. Imagine giving fluids or drugs, very important drugs into the subcutaneous tissue would be very, very bad. So you wanna be, really, uh, be really, really cautious with this. Now, the final question I get asked is, can you just push through this valve? Now say, you know, as a general rule, please don't try that. 
Now, in my experience, I've been able to push through valves very, very occasionally, um, but I would suggest that there's also risk of it. So there's sometimes I've been successful in pushing through a valve, but I haven't done it in the last 10 years or so because I don't think it's the right thing to do. Um, but also that there is a chance that you might traumatize the valve. For example, if you're up against the valve and you try to push through, maybe you're successful, but other times I've seen the, where you know, there is trauma caused to this whole vein and you might actually cause a rupture of this whole vein. And that's far worse because now you may not be able to use other parts of the vein, uh, say proximal, because you caused too much trauma there. So as a general rule, don't try to push through that valve. So I hope you enjoyed that video. Again, I don't think valves are a reason that you miss or fail an IV cannulation, but you have to treat it with respect and only use, the, <laughs> use these cannulas for potentially short period of, periods of time. And always be cautious that there's enough cannula lumen actually in the vein to make sure your drugs and foods are getting delivered to the right side. Thanks very much for watching.